Hi, my name is Maya, and today I'm here with Eddie Gutierrez. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So when did you discover your love for performing? Was there a specific person or show or class that got you started? Uh, so I think in, from my viewpoint, I started really late. <laughs> I started <laughs> at the age of 16, which uh, I guess with the peers I uh, had around me, I, I, I felt I was pretty late to the game. Um, I hadn't really been exposed to the arts in, in a lot of my life. I felt like somehow I'd been very sheltered from the arts. I really hadn't engaged in theater or music or dance in any way. Um, and Trinity really provided me uh, my first experiences in the arts thanks to a program that, uh, you know, we're not, we're not a performing arts magnet school, but when I was going here, we were, we were doing like eight shows a year, like, wow. and that's unheard of uh, in schools that aren't dedicated to the performing arts. Like, you know, we had our middle school show, our high school show, the play, a musical. We had student produced shows. We had self written shows. We, it was just constantly work was being done here. And so when I randomly was pulled to an audition for Romeo and Juliet by some of my friends my sophomore year of high school, I, uh, fell in love with this thing that I had never experienced before. I, I, I loved theater, I loved acting the second I started doing it. Uh, and because of just the, the just exposure to so many pieces every year, uh, I realized, oh, I think I also really love music. I really love dance. Uh, Janine Papan uh, put on a production of A Chorus Line here, which really sealed my love for all of it. Uh, doing that show was a game changer for me. And at that point, it was the summer before junior year. So I'm sure lots of people at the school will understand when you're at that point in your, in your career here, you're starting to think about college. You're starting to think about what am I gonna be doing uh, and making some really big decisions. Uh, and I really had about a year to figure out do I want to do this? Uh, so there was a lot of pressure uh, I was feeling, but this is the first time I felt super passionate about anything, was performing. And uh, this Trinity is what led me there. Um, so yeah, it all started here. Dancing started at 16, music started at 16, acting started at 16. That's, that's when it started for me. Uh, and, and I fell in love with it. Nice, that's mm. cool. <laughs> So on the topic of Trinity and shows at Trinity, yeah. what would you say is your favorite memory from Trinity? Uh, well, I do think A Chorus Line, uh, it was my favorite show memory here. And as we do this interview, you will probably f hear a lot more about this show. The show <laughs> has come to play a huge part in my life. Um, but then I, I think other than that, I think one of m the biggest, most profound experiences for me uh, was my senior year here. Uh, we had a, a performance like masterclass kind of program where uh, if you wanted to do it at the end of the program, you could uh, create a show. And so I wrote my first one man show that I ever did and I performed it uh, my spring semester of my senior year. And I think that was a moment that uh, kind of was just like the, the, the cherry on top of my entire experience here because I got to create a show that was about me, that was about uh, things I were, was passionate about and I was curious about um, as an adolescent and growing up and, and the questions I had about the life that was to come for me. The school really supported me uh, in every facet of who I was. You know, I, I in high school realized that I was queer. As a Latin man, I didn't have a lot of uh, role models as well. So, so this show and, and the arts allowed me to explore my identity as a queer Latin man in the arts. Uh, and, and what that meant. And, and you don't really get that experience a lot to really specifically hone in and who you are as a performer, as a human. Uh, and I will never forget that experience getting to create something from that part of me and share it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you balance schoolwork and training as a kid? There is a lot to do. There's a lot to do, especially at Trinity, <laughs> which yeah. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I feel like we would go to rehearsals and whenever you weren't being used for a scene or something, you like popped out your math book. You popped out, you know, the book that you had to read for English. Like it's, it, it's I think whether you're in the arts or not at this school, I think you, you figure out how to multitask really, really well. Because <laughs> uh, it's just the workload is so large. Um, but I, 
it, it weirdly wasn't that stressful, honestly, because yeah, there was a lot of work, but then at the same time we were doing something we loved so much by being here in the theater or performing. Uh, so, so days were really long and I think uh, anyone who is in the program still here at Trinity, they know that. They know that you get up early to be a class eight, whatever it is. What is it, 8.30, yeah, eight. something like that? Uh, School is done at three, and then you're here in rehearsal to five, six, uh, or if you have shows, you're doing that through the night. It's like, days are long, and, and, but you get used to it, and you learn to love it, and honestly, if you're gonna be a performer or in the arts, those are what days are like. Like, I was in tech week this past week before coming here, and you know, I was working 10 hour days, uh, 12 hour days, like it was, that's just par for the course. Uh, so honestly, it, it really trains you for what's coming. Yeah. Um, but again, if you if you love doing it, it it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> What's the best acting advice you've ever received? Uh, there's a lot of lessons that have come to me at different points in my career, but I think one of the most important things I've learned uh, was that never um, never never put who you are to the side when you're performing. Always incorporate your life experiences into what you're doing. I think there's this con concept of, uh, you know, I'm creating a character, uh, so, so it has to be th that character's life experience and what they know and everything, but your imagination that you use to create that comes from your own life experience. Like, you, you can't disqualify the experiences you've had, the, the emotions you've felt, the memories that you carry with you when you're creating these characters. Use them, take the pieces that work to create and build that character. Because uh, I think so many times in acting school, they're like, you have to be a blank slate and then you have to create from there. And it's like, okay, I, I understand the point of that. You wanna be able to become very different characters. You wanna have a wide range in, in the work that you do. But, but if you don't bring yourself to it, you're not gonna get the nuances. You're not gonna get the individuality of the character. You're not gonna get the, the idiosyncrasies, what makes it special. Um, because if you bring yourself to it and, and what's special about you, that's when a character's really gonna pop, really gonna shine. Um, so yeah, I think that, that was really important for me to learn and it was hard for me to learn, especially as a gay man or especially as a white, passing Latino, it's like, there's a lot of people who say you shouldn't be those things because you're not gonna get cast as this thing if they find out you're this or that. You, wanna, you, want, you don't want people to know anything about you so that way you can play as many things as possible. But I, I'm proud of who I am and I, I'm proud to bring those things to roles that I, I play and I'm really interested in telling stories that pertain to my communities and stories that I really understand well and I want to tell my community story. Nice. So yeah, I say just bring who you are to the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you've performed in theater and film. Mm -hmm. What would you say you prefer? Ah, uh, gosh, I wish I wish the ultimate art form had elements of both because I love I love film. For I feel I can be a lot more naturalistic. I can I can be a lot more nuanced in, in things I do, make smaller uh, choices that read really well on the camera, but there's nothing that compares to a live audience. Like that energy that you get from a, being around people and performing for people is, is just addictive, you know? It's, it's just the best feeling. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I love, I love both so, so much. And I, I love musical theater as well. And that's something that is starting to become uh, more prominent in film, but really that it's meant for the stage right now at least. Uh, and yeah. so I, I don't think I can answer that, but I really love elements of both for sure. I definitely don't love doing eight shows a week. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely not my favorite thing to be doing, uh, especially doing the same show over and over. I think as, as performers, we love new, th I mean, our lifestyle is so, uh, it's, not, it's not consistent. There's not so much, um, uh, routine to it. Uh, so we love new things. So definitely getting to do new things more often is more more desirable for myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, but eight shows a week. It's, it's <laughs> at least a steady job for the time being. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, is there anything you wish you'd known earlier on in your career that you know now? Uh, early on in my career, 
Hmm. I had an answer for this. <laughs> what did I want to know earlier on? You know, there's a lot of mistakes that you can make uh, that that you constantly will regret. You know, whether it be at an audition and and wishing you had done better, or after a take, a final take of a, of a scene for a film, and then you're like, oh, I should have done that choice, but I, it's done. We wrap that part. We're moving on to the next scene. We're never touching that again. Uh, I, I I think one of the biggest lessons, honestly. That to take away from all of that is, is to, to be proud of the work you do, do your best, and not and you can't look back at those things. Take the lessons that you've learned from that, especially from the audition process, which is can be so hard, and and you're getting told no so often. You have to go into it with a mindset of there's a lesson to be learned, whether or not I get the job, or or whether I or not I do the perfect take. Like there are lessons to learn that I will take into the next film I do or the next audition process. You know, it, it's, it's finding the lessons and, and making that what, what makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're working in a super competitive industry. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you do to stand out amongst your competition? Uh, I think it goes back to what I was saying before. I think, I think you have to bring yourself to it. So at an audition, if you have an impulse for something on a, in a script that might feel kind of left of center or like out there, you know, it's like, but it feels really true to you and you can justify it. I take the risk, you know, take the risk. I think when I started leaning into the fact that I am this like, because another thing is uh, as a dancer and, and someone who does film, if people see that you're a dancer, sometimes they question your acting ability. You know, people have a lot of uh, implicit biases on on what it means to be part of different art forms when you come to acting or, or be of certain identities when you come to acting. And, uh, but the more I learned that those were my strengths, you know, whatever quirkiness I might have or maybe my dance skills or maybe it's the fact that uh, I can speak Spanish and I also uh, do American Sign Language. Let me bring my special skills to, to this and if there's a way I can find the, uh, a place for them in the role or in the script, uh, in the performance, uh, do it, find a way, make it fun, make it interesting, make sure that I am being uh, interested by the choices I'm making. Stop, stop trying to make the right choice for the audition and try to actually just enjoy what I'm doing and have fun and, and, and rem remember that I love this. <laughs> like so much, so much of, of uh, the pressure in the audition process and in the work sometimes makes you forget like, oh wait, I did this because I'm in love with this. Like I love doing this. So remember that, because <laughs> yeah. it, it really makes it so much more fun when you have fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who are your biggest influences? Uh, my biggest influences, um, I, think, I think doing a lot of different things, being a dancer, being a, a singer, being an actor, and someone who's also now a director and choreographer, I have a lot of different uh, people to pull from. Uh, when it comes to film, Michel Gondry's work really is interesting to me. Uh, that's Science of Sleep, um, uh, uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Some things that are a little more uh, heightened uh, in terms of visuals, um, like Steven Spielberg's most recent West Side Story, visually stunning, every frame is a picture. So as a director, that really inspires me. Uh, as a dancer, uh, me and Michael's choreography always reminds me to always tell a story with my steps, you know, uh, and and so I take from that. Uh, as an actor, uh, Joe Mantello, this is actually as an actor and director, Joe Mantello, who uh, was the director of Wicked, uh, director of the Normal Heart revival, he is someone who I really look towards because he's a, a stunning actor and a stunning director. And I think that's something I really I really admire because I think what I want from my career is to be able to do lots of things. I don't want to just do one thing. M my dream of dreams is to really be a big director who does big shows and a really great actor who, who is still dancing and, and singing in, into his entire life, honestly. Throughout my life, I want to be doing that. Uh, so yeah, I love seeing people who can do lots of things. So Joe, Joe Mantel is a big one for me, for sure. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me a little bit about your most challenging audition process? So my most challenging audition process is for uh, one of the things that I am 
now is now one of the biggest parts of my life, which was for a chorus line. So a chorus line, the revival came back in 2006. Uh, original show was from 1975 to 1990, closed for 15 years. Then 2006, this revival happened. Um, I, I fell in love with the show when I did it here at Trinity. We did the original Michael Bennett uh, choreography for it. Uh, so I had a lot of the tools already for this show ready to go. Uh, and whenever the show is done, they generally do the original choreography. So, so if you know it once, you're going to be ready for the real thing. Um, but everyone wanted to be in that show. Like you said, this is a very competitive business. So uh, every, and everyone knows that choreography. So everyone's kind of coming in with uh, that same head start. Uh, and so it's a very competitive process. I auditioned for the show, I auditioned for the revival, I auditioned for the, the first national tour, I auditioned for um, the non-equity tour that happened, I auditioned for the Japan production that came out. All those times, I never got the job. Uh, the first time I did a double pirouette, which they do to, to just type people out, you're not even dancing, they just go, double pirouette, double pirouette, go down the line. Uh, and I did my double pirouette, I got cut immediately. Uh, the next time I auditioned for it, uh, I made it through the first dance combo, and then I had to do the second dance combo, I got cut. Uh, the next time I did, I got through all the dancing, I then had to do, I had to sing, I got cut after singing. Uh, and then, so those were all those productions. I kept getting cut, but I kept getting further every time in the process. So it was, it, it gave me a sense of hope each time, even though it broke my heart because I was so in love with that show and I wanted to do it so bad in a professional setting. Uh, uh, I still had a glimmer of hope because I was like, I'm getting further each time. Finally, a national tour came out in 2012. I auditioned for it, made it all the way through, read the sides and everything, and I booked the job. Now I work with uh, the torch bearer of the show, Bai Rook Lee, who was the original Connie Wong in 1975 for the show. She now does productions of it everywhere. Uh, she's still the go-to person for it. She's my mentor. I assist her on productions. Uh, but that was one of the most grueling and, emotion and emotionally uh, taxing processes for me because I, I would feel myself getting closer but constantly being told no for it, for something that I felt I was so right for. Uh, so, yeah, which I think is the epitome of what you're talking about. It's a competitive business. The audition process is hard. What, what, what can you do in an audition to stand out? And every time I went there, I just made sure I set a goal for myself at each audition so that way, even if I did fail, or not fail, if, if I didn't get the job, I still got something out of it. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that was the hardest for me, but also the most rewarding when I finally got it. That's amazing, I love that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so what has your biggest takeaway been from your career so far? My biggest takeaway, uh, this has been a hard two years. You know, we're coming out of a pandemic now uh, and not being able to do the thing that I love, the career that I, I've built my life towards for two years was really hard. Uh, and it, it, but it made me, it gave me time to reflect on why I was doing it. You know, I, I went to school at NYU where there were hundreds of people involved in the theater programs, whether they were directors, designers, performers, whatever it was. Uh, and a lot of them didn't stick with the business after, you know, they, they, a lot of them found other things they were passionate about or, or other parts of the theater industry that they wanted to go into. Some people just dropped all of it altogether and, and went a totally different direction. Um, but I always wondered, like, in the hard times, whether it be I wasn't working for a while, I couldn't book a job, or, or during the pandemic where there just was no option to work, uh, I had to really check in with myself about what has been keeping me going through all of this? Why, why am I still doing this even in the hard times, even as I start to build a life for myself? I, I feel like I'm an adult now and, I, and I'm trying to create a foundation that's steady and, and the business is not, is not steady, you know? So how, how do I make my life feel a little more secure while doing this very volatile profession? Uh, and for me, I realized that I was finding joy in the work itself, regardless of whether it was steady, regardless of if the, there was fame to come out of it. It was, I really enjoy telling stories and I really enjoy affecting an audience and giving something back to them. I think I was reminded of why I started doing this. When I, when I was 16 and I was first exposed to this program, 
I was in a place in my life where I was looking for purpose. I was looking for my identity, who I was, trying to figure that out. I was coming out at the time. I w- it, 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 20 years ago, basically, is when this was all happening. And at that time, I didn't have role models. I didn't have, I didn't have people who I could look to, 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 to help me realize the person I could become, the, the, the fully realized version of myself. Uh, and then I started finding it through theater. And I started finding it through shows I was seeing. I was being affected. I was, things I was dealing with in my own life, whether it be with uh, uh, being, uh, having my heart broken by love or, or, or figuring out what I was passionate about to give back to this world. I was seeing it on the stage. I was seeing how, how characters were dealing with uh, sorry, I was seeing how characters were dealing with it, or I was seeing performers do something that really interested me, and I wanted to do that for others. I wanted to give back in that same way, help people with their day, get through something they're dealing with in their life, provide an example of, of what you could become if you're looking for a role model, because that's what I found at Trinity. I found, I found, by doing the arts here, I found adults who reflected back something I was feeling inside. I found, I found people who allowed me to express myself as a queer man, as a Latino, as, as someone interested in the arts. And, uh, and that was because a community was created here that supported that and that was open about that, even though it wasn't, a lot of things weren't talked about at that time. You know, it was a very different time. Uh, but I was supported by teachers here to be who I was, and that was very important. And so I go back to that, and I go back to that I can be that for someone else. And that is what I always have to remember, even in the hard times of this career, that, yeah, I might not be making a lot of money uh, at certain points in this career, I may not be working at certain points, but there's a power to this art, and when it works, I can feel it, and I can feel people's lives being uh, impacted, and that's really important to me, to be able to give that back to an audience, to a community, to, uh, to our world, you know? Uh, so, yeah, that's what I hold on to, and that's the biggest thing I've learned, because it's easy to get down on yourself when you're not, when you're being told so much, uh, sorry, when you're being told no so much, but you gotta remember that it's important work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm.